All right, it's been a while. We're out in the lab today, and we're tuning a UHF uh, duplexer cavity. Um, got most of it done here. I'm just going to kind of go over real quick on how this works. Uh, may help some folks out. And uh, it's just kind of interesting, something different. Anyway, stay tuned. We're going to get into it here, and I'm going to go over what steps I took to get this calibrated. Okay, so this is a pretty old unit. And the way they come configured is basically you end up with this here, which connects out to the uh, antenna side. Um, and then it splits off into TX and RX or on this particular repeater. Um, they wanted it programmed. This is what the frequencies were or what I showed them to be before. Um, but they wanted them programmed to uh, transmit from the repeater at 444.550 and the receive side um, high pass 449550. So basically what we wanna do is from this connector, which basically would end up connecting up here and here, so in between these two, two cavities, um, transmit from the repeater would come in on this side, the receive would come in on this side. And basically what we're wanting to do is on the receive side, we're wanting to block everything as best we can um, that is not 449550. So anything that's adjacent or even the transmitting frequency that we're using here, um, we wanna block that and just let that through. Uh, here, we wanna block everything going this direction. So we want really good pass through on the transmit side for 44550, which is what we've done here. Uh, and, you know, anything that we can block, uh, we will that's outside of this. But we want a peak, peak uh, throughput to be on this frequency. Uh, so it's kind of a directional thing. you got to think about it this way. The transmitter is going this direction out the antenna. Going this direction, you're receiving RF via this T from the antenna. And you're going out into... Uh, the repeater side of the rx so let me just go through here kind of what i've got um, a lot of times what i'll do is this uh, i have a hp service monitor this was designed for cell phones um, works just great on the frequencies that i'm using on i don't have a real word iron loss bridge basically what i do is i use this little mini circuits here um, and this is pretty accurate um, it'll basically get your your frequencies on the fine tuning, usually what I'll do is I'll actually hook up to the particular cavity and tune it. As you can see here, we're hooked up to the, this is the receive cavity. Right there, 44950, that's where we're, we're peaking out the reception um, on that frequency and trying to block as much as we can everywhere else. Um, there was a frequency that they wanted to block around five, uh, four, four, six. Uh, and that's about as good as we can get, you know, around 26 dB a loss. Um, that's not ideal if you're adjacent to another repeater, uh, but that's the best that we can get with this. Um, so basically I've tuned both of these and just uh, as a tip, most cavities, uh, this particular one has a locking nut on the outside of the stem, uh, which basically you need to break loose. And basically, you kind of see there, it's kind of, you tighten this up and it tightens up on this threaded rod and it fixes it. This particular repeater, when I first got it, I actually had to move this, uh, this side here a little bit to get anything through. It was full attenuated. I'm um, not really sure what the problem was there. Hopefully this thing will will continue to give give some use but uh after i moved these a little bit and got everything kind of cleaned up my my impression is it probably in here maybe there's some corrosion or something um but moving them around a little bit kind of freed that up and got it uh you can kind of see there we're filtering now the other filter is basically the opposite so it's going to try to let through uh four four five five zero uh, so it would have a peak somewhere down here of the throughput and it's going to try to mitigate or block any other frequencies that are coming through 
<clears throat> so basically you get it adjusted you tighten these nuts and usually what i like to do and what i'm doing now i've already went through this once i'll actually go back through and hook up everything again and just kind of move around on this stuff and make sure that there's not an issue um you know you want it to stay tuned and that's just as important as tuning it uh, so make sure that you check these uh, the person that gave this to me to tune um, this is not my unit um, basically put these labels high pass low pass um, if you are doing one of these what i would recommend uh, i would actually recommend just doing txrx from the repeater side that's the way i, I label all my repeaters so that i know um, the tx from the repeater always goes would go here where this low pass is at and the rx would go here so basically we're transmitting from the repeater side four four five five three now a lot of people get confused and a lot of uh, repeaters that i have programmed um, run into this so they'll give me these frequencies even though i try to explain that repeater side is going to be the opposite from what uh whatever you're connecting to is so your ht or your mobile that you're programming in to use this repeater it's actually going to receive on 4455 and transmit on 449 so that in other words the radio is transmitting coming in here we're letting through 449 going to the radio uh, same goes for this <clears throat> this is going to be the exact opposite so they're going to want to receive on the far end on 44550 so i hope that makes sense a lot of times it helps just to draw it out um, if you do work on one of these it makes it a lot simpler if you just remember i have a repeater i have a transmit wire and a receive wire if you'll write down the frequencies for what you actually want those to be thinking about it from the receiver or the repeater side it makes it a lot easier to to set up and program uh, but anyway i've got this one done um, again this is really simple uh, this does have a uh, insertion loss and a return loss bridge function which does work with this and the way it works is basically you just you terminate everything and you basically hook up that t and it will actually graph out um you know your return loss for both frequencies you'll actually have both both show up um, this is a little bit more accurate way of doing it because we're doing one cavity side at a time a little bit simpler um, i may trust you know return loss bridge a little more if i actually had a real return loss bridge but i don't uh, but this is the guaranteed way of doing it basically splitting up these cavities and tuning it basically this is the transmit side so we would put the transmit in here and all we're really doing is seeing what comes out here same concept here except it's in reverse we're going to transmit in on the antenna side and see what we got through so we're looking for those frequencies for you know peek through and then um band block anything that's not those frequencies in those directions talking about again two directions transmit and receive um so hopefully this helps some folks out who haven't seen even seen a video in several years on uh tuning one of these and uh, there's several online that are really good uh but i just kind of want to do a newer one update and uh i hadn't done a hand video in a while so this is how duplexers work and for those of y'all that are not ham enthusiasts what a duplexer does it allows you to use one antenna um, so this would be at an antenna site and you would actually have this plugged onto here so you'd end up with one antenna wire that was both transmit and receive for this repeater um, that's what this is doing is it's combining the transmit and receive signals onto one antenna system and blocking out everything that may be surrounding and blocking out output from itself so basically what you end up with is when you do this um, you're counting on the fact that you're going to block out we're transmitting at 4450 you don't want a lot of 4450 to go directly into the receive side otherwise you'll burn up the transmitter uh, so that's why you need to be real careful um, ideally i like to shoot uh, 30 is probably the minimum uh, typically you know a lot of the higher end the big uh, duplexers um, you can get a lot more than 30 uh, dB of isolation. Anyway, hope this helps some folks out. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks.